Uh, well, do you remember a certain type called like parametric equations? Okay. Yeah, yeah. This one here we would call like a Cartesian equation, yeah. right? Because we're using x, y's, and z's. But actually, what when we look at vectors, we can also consider a vector equation of a sphere. Like Cartesian is just kind of familiar. This is kind of like a subheading, I suppose. But why is Cartesian great? Because Cartesian is familiar. We know how to deal with them. We know um, how to work with coordinates and things like that. But suppose we wanted to think about this from a vector perspective. Like if you took a vector and you put it at a, at a, at a center point, like my fist, right? And you're, you're kind of wrapping it around. Think about it from a vector perspective. What are you kind of saying about the properties of this vector? How could you create like a vector equation in regards to this? So let's say we had some vector v, right? What, what are you actually, like, what are you actually interested in? Vector v is variable, like it changes depending on the orientation, things like that. But what's this thing that remains consistent? The length, the magnitude. The magnitude, so the, yeah, that's exactly right. So a vector equation for a circle is going to be taking some particular vector and its magnitude is going to be equal to the radius. So that's sort of the, at the origin sort of situation. What if we sort of shifted it? How could, sorry? <laughs> you were like, that, you knew that was coming. <laughs> Well, 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 I'm still thinking of circles, but I think that's yep. fine. Because, say, if the circle has center A, mm -hmm. and we're looking at a point on the circle, point P, yep. then, um, wait, did I say circle has, okay, a center C? Or yeah, center C, by the way, it's fine, A, yeah, C, yeah. C, point P, then O, C, mm. C, P, would be our, um, Vector, right? That is plus, uh, OC plus CP, right? So if this is the C here, yes. and, wait, O as in the origin, or yes. was, so let's say O is here or something, that's O there, right? And let's say we have some point that we, now V changes depending on where it is, but let's say V is here or something, okay. right? So what are you saying then? OV is equal to OC plus CV. Yes, that's pretty simple. I mean, it's, I feel like we have access to both of those depending on the center, which we can find through the equation itself, the equation of the sphere. Um, we can find the distance from the origin to yeah. the center. You're right, yes. And then we just use the radius of CV. Exactly right. And what is the radius? Which one here represents the radius, just to clarify? Good, so in the same sense, which one are you actually interested? You're mainly interested in, right, this, because think about this one, in the case where it was the origin, right, you only cared about which one represents radius. So actually, we're only interested in this one here. We want to find an expression for that. So we could just kind of rearrange it, right? We could get OV minus OC, right, because we're only interested in, this is going to be our radius here, right? And so how can I rewrite this in terms of sort of that expression? Well, what is OV? We could just represent that as vector V, for example, right? And then this would just be vector C, right? And so that's the one that we're gonna be interested in. And what is CV gonna be equal to? Yeah, exactly right, yeah. So this is essentially our vector equation which you've developed, really good job. Now the abs, or the magnitude, sorry, of V take away C is going to equal to R, right? I guess the question is, how can we use this to answer things, right? So typically what's going to happen is you're going to utilize two vectors and you're going to from them find some sort of Cartesian equation because the Cartesian equation is typically how we do them. They may want you to write them in a vector form. That's just something you should be familiar with. But let's take, for example, like let's take... Uh, center this one. And let's say, let's say this is the center of a sphere. And let's say we take a point A. And 
and this is a point on the sphere. Right. How would you find the Cartesian equation? So we have all this information here. We have like a center. We've got a point on the sphere. And we'll find the Cartesian equation here. Have a think what we could do. Well, we could find the radius with that formula we just found. Yeah. So, so what we. Yeah. Um, so like 2i plus j plus 5k mm -hmm. minus, um, I guess, plus i plus j plus k. Yep. Um, which I guess we could. I get, so yeah, so I'll find a I'll find a minus c first. So what did you say that was? That was so two. Two i plus j. That's that's just plus one j, right? I'm looking at that like this. Uh, so if you're doing a minus c, you're doing a minus c or c minus a. A minus c. So then you're doing. Oh, okay, you're you're, you're recording, sorry, like, sorry, I was I was writing out a first, then minus c. Yeah. Uh, so I was doing two i plus j plus five k minus c. Oh, right, okay. So you're running out the whole I thing guess, first. I guess we could <coughs> yeah. just do it straight away. So yeah, you can do that if you want. Okay. Either way, it's fine. Um, okay. I, I think it's just more writing to do it out like this, but yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I'm happy if you just, just skip it straight to... Yeah, so that's 3i yeah. um, plus 2j yeah. plus 5k minus 3. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And we find the magnitude of yeah. 5 by um, Pythagoras. Perfect, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy. And so we should be able to get a Cartesian equation pretty easily yes. from that. Um, so the center is that so x minus one squared plus y minus one squared plus z minus one squared equals. Hmm. Oh, careful, careful with that one. Because I would actually write out the coordinate there. Uh, for what you just said. So what's the center? The center is negative one, negative one, negative one. Yeah. Oh, plus one, plus one. Yes, so just careful with the conversion there, yeah. So our Cartesian equation would be x plus one, because it's x minus that value. Yeah. And what's that equal to, we said? Forty-nine, yeah, because it would be r squared, yeah. and so that's something you have to keep in mind. A vector equation is different to a Cartesian equation. In our vector equation, because we're looking at the magnitude already, we don't typically square both sides. That's sort of the idea behind it. This is our vector equation because you're only looking at the magnitude. But in our Cartesian equation, we'll have all, the, all those elements squared there. Yeah. So I just want to finish off this question here. Um, we looked at one type of question. We want to find the equation of a sphere uh, given a center and a point of the sphere. What happens though if I was given uh, two endpoints and there are the endpoints of the diameter of a sphere? So just to kind of give you some reference. So if we had something like this, I've got this point and this point. Now I'm trying to find the equation of this sphere. We can use the same idea. We do really need that center there because that's going to be essential to finding out the equation of the sphere. And so whether it's going to be in component form, whether in like coordinate form, sorry, this is like a position vector and this is a point, we can still apply the same idea, right? So I can say, all right, well, I have the two endpoints. To find the center, have a think about what's going to be going on here. It just needs to be the midpoint of those, right? So the center can be, uh, well, 2 plus 4 divided by 2, so that's 6 divided by 2, which is 3. I've got 3 plus negative 3 divided by 2. That's just going to be 0. And then 5 plus 9 is 14 divided by 2 is 7. So there's my center. And so once I've done that step, now I can actually find uh, the Cartesian equation by using the same idea. So I can take uh, A minus C, or I can actually take B minus C as well. It doesn't really matter. It should be the same either way, right? So if I take the vector... Uh, a C, let's say, that's going to be equal to 3 minus 2, it's 1, 0, minus 3, negative 3, 7 minus 5, is negative 2. And just to check, if I was to use uh, B, C, I should, <laughs> fingers crossed, get the same thing. So 3, take away 4, negative 1, 
zero take away positive three, and then seven take away nine, negative two. And the reason why I've got a negative there is because well, if I've got a, let's say a, b here, um, these two, if I look at them, they're pointing actually in opposite directions. So in that sense, that's why I've got, this is the negative uh, scale version of this one here. They're just pointing in opposite directions. But actually it doesn't really matter because why did we even want this? We're actually interested in the magnitude. So either way, the magnitudes of both of these is gonna be the same. I just wanted to uh, do that just to highlight that it doesn't matter which one you pick. And so we'll take the square root of negative one, oh, which I'm using AC, aren't I? So it's one squared plus negative three all squared plus negative two all squared. And once I do that, uh, then I'm going to get nine, one, this is the hardest part, one plus nine square root of 14, I think. And so my vector equation then is going to be taking my center here. I've got uh, x minus three all squared plus y minus zero all squared, which is y squared plus z minus seven all squared is equal to 14 when I square that as well, okay? So that's how we can find the Cartesian equation when given the uh, diameter endpoints of a sphere as well.